ladies and gentlemen, this is Zahe Fram, your host, and welcome to the second episode of Zoom In by AGP Tour. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to offer our deepest condolences to the family, friends, and students of Coach Marcelo Freitas. Coach Marcelo was one of the first jiu-jitsu coaches to come to the UAE and take part of the school jiu-jitsu program making a profound impact on the sport and on a lot of athletes. I personally had the privilege of meeting him last month at a jiu-jitsu seminar. Even though it was just a little time, it was clear to me that he was more than just a coach, but also a great person. The day he passed, it was heartwarming to see the outpouring love and respect from the jiu-jitsu community in UAE. Almost everyone on my personal Instagram account had posted photos of him, and this man had coached so many athletes at some point in their career. In honor of Coach Marcelo, I'd like to share a quote that he used and everyone found particularly inspirational. Difficile air para lua de jeep. Hard is going to the moon with a jeep. Coach Marcelo, thank you for everything. May your soul rest in peace. Moving on to today's episode, I'm super excited for this lineup too. We're gonna talk with Hessa Shamsi, a name that has been on the radar lately, especially after she won the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam London. The great Taliesin Suarez will be with us on the show too, balancing between coaching and competing, consistent winning in jiu-jitsu, and other interesting topics too. You don't wanna miss this one, trust me. Also on the show is Andy P, all the way from China. He will be here to discuss the never-ending expansion of AJP Tour and the upcoming event in Hangzhou. But first up on the program, we have none other than Lucas Protasio, the poster boy of the South America Continental event. Lucas, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Zahi. Lucas, I have to ask, everybody was telling me, ask Lucas, how did it feel to be the poster boy last time in the South American Continental event? Your photo is everywhere, tell me. So I, I felt uh, uh, amazing because... Um, you know, I had a, I had a lost in the Grand Slam London. I lost to Max, and uh, I, I I wanted one gold from AGP. I want a, I want a gold medal, and when I saw the poster, I I was very excited to show my my skills. You know to show my my game and uh, give a uh, good jiu jitsu in to to everybody watch so it was like a motivation it, yes a motivation beca because i i i feel i didn't fight uh, so well in the grand slam london you know so i wanted to give uh, all my my power in the in the fight, also because I was in the in the poster, so I felt uh, more pressure for this. And in fact, it did you great, right? Double gold in Brazil. Yes, exactly. I I, I had a good I had good matches. I I trained a lot during the week, and uh, it was great. I, I and I I love the event. It was so big event. Everybody cheering and uh, speaking, you know, in the fights, uh, very beautiful event. I think was the, 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 the most beautiful event I went in Brazil, in the, uh, in, in all the events that, that I went, that was the, the best. And it's, it's performances like yours that actually make uh, the events exciting always hunting, always hunting for the pass, always hunting for the submission. Yes, exactly. And this is what you need, right? In order for someone to be able to uh, always aim for the gold, you need to always go for it, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh... Lately, a lot of people are saying, Lucas, he's everywhere and all the continents just hunting. What do you have to say about that? Is this part of your strategy? Is this how you like people to see you all over the world? Well, I, I love travel, you know. I, I, I discovered more about uh, myself when I was um, fighting in, in many countries. 
I, I fight in Austria, I fight in, in Madrid, in Spain, in Hungary. Uh, I try to go to Jordan, but uh, they, they canceled the event because didn't have uh, enough athletes. But you know, uh, you can't, uh, you can't stop someone that uh, never stop. Right. 100%. So uh, the, the, the consistency is what uh, make you go to the, to the gold or you, you know, you go to the events and you start to get more, uh, like used to the, to the, to the adrenaline, I like uh, go to the to the arena and uh, prepare yourself is very good. Uh, and if you are in the other countries, you are more uh, out out of your comfortable zone. So so I think uh, this makes uh, may, maybe makes people think about like wow he went to. Uh, like um netherlands he went to madrid and and after uh to brazil or somewhere else behind behind enemy lines right yes so y you always looking for, for some uh, you know something new is is very good i really appreciate the agp for have uh, uh competitions in in all over the world because you you always can uh you know put yourself in a different situation i remember i went to croatia and then i have to take a flight to abu dhabi for uh one event in abu dhabi i think it was a national national pro in abu dhabi and then in the next month I had the uh, continental asia as a continental, I saw is go the continental in Europe is going to be in Turkey now. Yeah, it's going to be big. This one is going big. to be big and special, right? Very good. Uh, yeah, and also has the AGP Tour European ranking. European ranking, yeah. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Always new. A, always new additions, right? Yeah, it is a new ranking now. So it's, it's very good to be part of this, you know. That's awesome to hear. That's awesome to hear. And we love you for that because you're part of everything. You know, a lot of athletes, you're around, you're, you're uh, deeply involved in the jiu-jitsu scene. And you know how some of the athletes just search uh, for a comfortable uh, atmosphere. So if they compete in the States, this is where they like to compete. If they compete in Asia, you only see them there, right? But not Lucas. Yes, exactly. I like to, I like to fight everywhere. If I if I can, you know, uh, if I have uh, matches, I go I go everywhere. I was sad because I couldn't go to Australia because uh, I had a, a problem with uh, flight. Is so far away, and uh, I have this. I had I had this this problem. So I was a little sad, but uh, I went to London and I went to AGP South America and uh, I'm looking forward to fighting Lithuania. Is a uh, national that is, is going to happen there. Right now you're in Rio? Right now I'm in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. So this is where you're doing your training camp? I... I come. I came here uh, two days ago, and yes, I will start my training camp uh, this week. Today, I'm going to train in, in a few academies here, and uh, during the week as well. And then I go to Greece for a training camping, and then I go. I want to look in somewhere. Uh, I want to fight some somewhere in Europe. And then I go to uh, Abu Dhabi for the Grand Slam. The final it, tour, right? 
the final stop. Yes, exactly. Is the 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 event is is going to be my birthday. Oh, happy birthday then. Then you know what to do, right? Yes, you May 7, I I come for my gift. <laughs> so I'm guess you're going to be very well prepared to get that gift. Yes, yes, I I want to. I want to come uh one week before maybe uh one week and a half before i think uh april 29 is the event in lithuania or in netherlands in international pro or national pro and then i go to abu dhabi for for the grand slam so when it comes to different uh not, i'm not gonna say importance but the different sizes of the championships do you consider one championship to be maybe like a place where you can identify some areas of improvement so you are better in the bigger championships? Yeah, I think if uh, you have to look for uh, good matches, right? Mm -hmm. You uh, Sometimes, and also uh, for the points, I think. Uh, the, because the national pro gives you 1,000 points, but the international, I think, gives you uh, 600 points. So you you you, you must to choose uh, one competition. So sometimes it's better you find a. A competition that that gives you more points and uh, also uh, you always have uh, good matches you know they put sometimes uh, a purple belt don't have a match and they put the purple belt with you or the brown belt or someone in the master category and uh, so it, you can it will find help you it. test more areas in your game right Yes, it, it makes you. Uh, you need to fight with uh, some someone different always. So it's it's very good. You never. Uh, you you never like uh, don't have no one. You ne you always you always have someone. And when it comes to somebody, high performance in your level, I always wonder, like you reach to a level where you're competing at the top how do you find how do you still find areas to improve in for example uh, you love passing the guard right you you love that aggressive style of passing the guard let's say in one championship or in one competition uh, this particular uh, guard pass didn't work with you but you know it right it's something yes. which you are 100% sure of, but in that particular uh, scenario, it didn't work. How do you, how do you uh, treat such situations? So, uh, it happened this, I think, in, in Grand Slam London. Uh, I started the fight, uh, I was losing by four points, and I was uh, trying to pass Max guard. And uh, it was so hard to pass his guard. Uh, last time we fight in the World Championship in Abu Dhabi, the, the World Pro in Abu Dhabi, I, I couldn't pass his guard. We was 0-0, zero, zero. we went to gold score. And, uh, well, I, I, I didn't have an option. I, I, I needed to pass his guard for forget the points and uh it was so hard to pass his guard and uh, i i saw the time uh, going the time going you know i tried to to not to not stay frustrated you know like uh i i, I don't want to to feel myself like oh i can't do it or, oh i can't i can't make i always i always try to to go forward you know some uh, I I couldn't pass his guard, but I th that's where you need to see what what you are doing wrong, right? So 
I think you always have to study more because uh, if I if I if I didn't pass his guard, it's because uh, he he was doing very great, of course. But I need to do something different. I like to pass Toreando. I like to pass uh, with pressure. But because he's flexible and uh, very good at recovery, I I couldn't do it. So now I'm working more my speed, you know, put put pressure and then go go fast to the to the pass and uh, change side or work work for the back. So so there is always what, room. Uh, there is always room for improvements. You feel right? Yes, exactly. I, I he he jumped in my back and. Uh, I, I I have to I have to improve my my guard. I have to improve my uh, my speed. I have to improve the be begin of the fight. So uh, always you have to look for something new. But well, uh, I uh, in in the next competitions I want to do better. I want to to go. Uh, smart we're we're expecting nothing less from you uh in abu dhabi grand slam uh, this may in abu dhabi it's your birthday i'm personally now expecting you to you know come and get that gift right yes exactly i i want to give myself 100 percent. i will i will give everything in the matches uh Stay, stay tuned to the to the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam. We we're going to be prepared and uh, give you the best show that everyone uh, uh, deserve. Awesome, awesome. Well, Lucas, thank you a lot for your time. It's always a pleasure talking to you, and we'll see you in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Of course, Zahi. You guys will see me. Thank you so much, guys. You're welcome. Be good. Thank you, AGP. Thank you, Zahi. Thank you, everyone. Good day. Alas. Thanks, Lucas. Next up, we have Andy P, one of the main organizers of AJP China, and also the Chinese national team head coach. If anyone knows the Chinese jiu-jitsu scene, it's Andy. And that's what we are here to talk about today. Ni hao, Andrew Xin Xin. It's great to have you on our show today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Zahi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Andy, I know you've been involved you? in uh, organizing AJP events in China before COVID hit. And now we're back. Tell me, how excited are you that uh, the country is uh, relatively opening for all sports events, right? Yeah, actually, uh, it's really great news. Um, starting starting March of this year, uh, China started issuing uh, tourist visas again. So before there was a lot of restrictions on uh, on coming to China. You know, there's a quarantine, and uh, and because of that, there was a lot of delays. You know, even the Asian Games delayed. But um, now it's everything is open again. You know, so I think we're just looking at um, having like all flights resume as normal. Yeah. But other than that, China is completely free again. Yeah, it's wonderful. It feels great. Awesome, awesome to hear that, right? And next up is Hangzhou. Everyone is talking yeah. about China is getting back, big events coming up this year, and who can tell us more about that than Andy P? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so on April 29th, we're having <clears throat> we're having an event in uh, Hangzhou. Okay. And it's really quite significant because Hangzhou is, is actually the site of the Asian Games this year. So we're going to be we're going to be holding uh, the next RSAJP, the China National Pro uh, National Championship, uh, April 29th. So coming up in like two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, it's just around the corner. And what uh, can participants that are traveling to China expect? You know, a lot of people are not familiar with the. Uh, a Chinese jiu-jitsu scene, right? Let alone 
having right. a big event in China itself. Yeah. So, um, well, I think, uh, you know, it's like this, you know, anything in China, you know, even even the small numbers are large. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and just to give you a, a little bit of an idea, there's probably close to 20 million registered Taekwondo players in China. Imagine that, 20 million. So... Uh, we want to do the same with jiu-jitsu. We're going to do our best to make sure that jiu-jitsu spread across China the same way that Taekwondo spread across China, you know? And we believe that um, jiu-jitsu is a great sport, it's a great martial art, and we believe that, uh, well, obviously China is one of the largest markets in the world, if not the largest market, and uh, it's a very cerebral martial art, so we believe that uh, the Chinese will take to it uh, really well. And we're really happy to be working with AJP to be promoting this great sport, our beloved sport in China. It's incredible, right, how this sport has deep roots all over the world now. And wherever jiu-jitsu lands, sports in general, but jiu-jitsu yeah. in particular, right, it lands in a country and just like positive good things tend to happen. Yeah. And you actually mentioned, um, you mentioned a very special word just now. You said historical. I think actually most people don't uh, realize the modern history of of our sport. You know, um, actually Hangzhou is the birthplace of, of um, a gentleman by the name of Chen Yuanyun. Okay, uh, he, he was born in Hangzhou, and he was actually born in the district that we're doing the event in on April oh, really? 29th. Okay, so we're we're in his hometown. Yeah. Now, what's special about this, about Grandmaster Chen Yunyin, is about 400 years ago, he traveled to Japan. And uh, he is one of the co-founders of a style of jiu-jitsu called Kito Ryo Jiu-Jitsu. Okay, Kito Ryo Jiu-Jitsu. And it just so happens that Jigoro Kano, the founder of judo, studied Kito Ryo Jiu-Jitsu. Okay? He was... Uh, and he, he propagated, well, he, he was a representative of Kito Ryo Jiu-Jitsu, and then he founded the Kodokan, he founded Judo, right? And one of his disciples, Mitsuyo Maeda, traveled to Brazil and taught in Brazil, met with the Gracies, and, you know, the rest is history. You know, we know how the rest of that story plays out. But, um, yeah, actually, that's Hongzhou a, has very, That's a very history lesson by itself. The, the modern style of Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, exactly. So, so AJP coming back to Hangzhou is, is actually really, really special. You know, it's like it's gone a full circle, right? So we're actually coming back to the place where, where, I mean, Hangzhou has a direct influence on the development of what we what we now know today as as modern jiu-jitsu or, you know, Brazilian style jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's incredible. And uh, you being deeply involved in the jiu-jitsu, you're the national team coach. What's what's uh, the feedback like? How, how are the uh, academies getting uh, ready for that event? Well, uh, are you talking about you're talking about the Asian Games, right? No, I'm talking about the AJB or you're event. We're talking about uh, April 29th. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, actually, uh, it. it it's like this, you know, for for the last, I would say for the last 25 years, um, jiu-jitsu has been, has been brewing in China. You know, it's like a nice coffee. You brew it for a long time. And um, we, we have a lot, of, a lot of academies all over China now. We probably have maybe between 200 to 300 schools, are, you know, and um, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of Brazilian practitioners who have traveled all the way from Brazil to come to China to teach, okay? And uh, and the schools are just, they're just popping up everywhere, you know? And we have a lot of, we have a lot of events here in China now. And um, and obviously, you know, anyone who practices jiu-jitsu knows the AJP and is a, is a dream for, for competitors to have the opportunity to compete in the AJP and also 
uh, maybe one day travel to Abu Dhabi to compete at the Abu Dhabi World Pro, right? So we've had a lot of positive feedback. My phone has been blowing up like <laughs> for the last three, four weeks, you know what I mean? Oh my God, AJP is back, you know, we, we got to sign up, we got to sign up. And uh, it, it's, it's been really positive and we're really excited to, uh, to do our event on April 29th. And talking about Abu Dhabi. Yeah, we're going to show everybody. We're going to show everybody. <laughs> Yeah. No doubt. And everyone is expecting big stuff from China, right? Oh, you guys are going to see. You guys are going to see. This event is going to look amazing. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And uh, as mentioned, uh, talking about Abu Dhabi, I know that this year there was some type of uh, collaboration between UAE and China when it comes to jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Is that well, um, yeah, actually, um, one of uh, one of our top sports officials was in was in uh, was in Abu Dhabi towards the end of last year. And uh, there was some discussion about how um, about how China and the UAE can work together more and maybe even get our national teams to train together uh, in the future, especially in preparation for the upcoming Asian Games. So we're really excited and looking forward to, you know, make that happen. And how do you think uh, such collaborations between countries will uh, benefit uh, the future of the sport? Well, um, so this is the thing, you know. Um, I would say that, okay, jiu-jitsu is, is still considered relatively new in China because... Um, It wasn't officially recognized by the government until uh, in, until 2019. Okay, so only only a, a few years ago, you know. Um, but we've had we've had a lot of we've had maybe 20 years to to build the sport, and I think that I I, I think that at at some point, you know, China is, is a lot like the UAE in a sense that when the government gets involved to help promote the sport, you know, you will see it grow really really fast and that's what we're looking forward to is is now that is now that the government has officially recognized the sport then you're going to see a lot more um you're going to see a lot more chinese athletes get involved uh, and, and train professionally you know what i mean right and then i think that's the best way to develop talent and also with uh with the youth we're going to see a lot of that happening in china and i think um You know, obviously I'm a little bit biased, but I definitely believe that China will be a major powerhouse in jiu-jitsu in the next, you know, five to ten years, hopefully even sooner than that, before I retire. <laughs> still too young yeah. to retire, right? I'm still too young to retire, exactly. <laughs> And uh, talking about long term, not uh, five to ten years, but after Hangzhou, what are your plans? Yeah. What is AJP China up to? Well, um, so I, I don't want to reveal too much because, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, exciting things that are happening. But um, we definitely will see a lot more events, you know. Um, and, an, and another thing is we want to, uh, we really want to make the jiu-jitsu, uh, We really want to make jiu-jitsu shine in this part of the world. You know what I mean? Um, jiu-jitsu actually started off with, with um, you know, like I mentioned, it wasn't it wasn't recognized until just recently. You know, so we have a lot of we have a lot of really really great talent um, that maybe don't get the support of the government or maybe don't get the recognition by the government. You know, and I think um, at, at least. At least this is this is what I'm thinking. Of course, we need to go back and discuss this, but I think um, we have to figure out some kind of way to to get to get. We have to bring this talent out, and we have to develop this talent, and then we have to give this talent, you know, Chinese talent, an opportunity to 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 travel more and compete. And I'm thinking there's got to be a way for us to get um, our Chinese uh, athletes. I want them to compete all around the world in every single AJP in all the major AJPs around the world. You know what I mean? I want them to hit up all the grand slams. I want them to go to the continental, uh, the, the regional pros, the continental pros. 
You know what I mean? And obviously the Abu Dhabi World Pro, but there's got to be a way to, and especially the kids as well. You know what I mean? I mean, they're definitely the future. So I would say that we we have to find a way to develop this talent and to find a way to start developing this talent uh, from the youth, you know? And I think the best way is to do I think the best way is to do intensive training camps back in back in Abu Dhabi. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe we can get um, other organizers right in the region. We can we can get together because we all have like we all have like a bunch of uh, kids, you know, who are competing in our events, right? But let's say you know we can all get together once a year, right? And everybody brings out their kids. You know, China will bring their kids, right? Kazakhstan can bring their kids, Korea can bring their kids, you know, uh, Thailand can bring their kids. And what if we do all one huge training camp uh, in Abu Dhabi ahead, let's say ahead of the Abu Dhabi World Pro. I like your imagination. Um, Or maybe sometime in the summer. You see what I'm saying? Maybe sometime, because kids, right, they have summer vacation. So maybe we figure out a way to get them there during the summer, you know, when when they have time off. And we do this awesome training camp. We can do it in the arena. Imagine like two, three hundred kids all training together from all different parts of the world, right? Along with Emirati kids. I think that would be really awesome. It definitely will be very awesome. That's on my agenda. <laughs> yeah. I bet it's a very long yeah. agenda. Andy, I'm sure when uh, yeah. there is a will, there's definitely a way. Thank you very much for your insight. Sure. Thank you for the history yeah. lesson. And uh, hopefully we'll meet again Thank either in Abu Dhabi or in China. Until then, be safe. Definitely. Hey, for- 429 so I hope to see you here. Inshallah. Our next guest is Telesin Suarez, one of the brightest minds in the sports. A highly respected competitor, professor, coach, you name it. He has competed in MMA and still competes at the highest level of the sport of Jiu Jitsu. He's also teaching, mentoring students in the UAE for the last three years. How did all that happen? He's about to tell us all of that and even more. Talison, uh, thank you for joining us today. I know you had a busy weekend. No days off, right? No, no. So thank you for this opportunity. I'm so happy to be here to talk about my jiu-jitsu, my jiu-jitsu career, my life in UAE. So I'm so shy in front of the camera, but I do my best to this interview be good. Shala. Don't be shy. We're, we're between friends, right? Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, since I saw you yesterday coaching, and I know you're an active competitor, I would like to start with that. Your experience in balancing being an active competitor and an actual coach, like a full-time coach. A lot of people wonder, how can someone yeah, balance between easy. the two? Yeah, it's not easy because sometimes you need to train, you need to support your students. But I have one team behind me, uh, Marcelo Banuza, they give support in the train, give support to be a coach. So it's not easy, but I always, uh, I do this in Bra- I did this in Brazil too much. So now I need to manage how to do it. But I think it's, uh, if I, my mind is good to compete, my mind is good for teach my students, it's important. And do you feel that um, everyone, everyone that's part that jiu-jitsu was part of his life they always want to compete but sometimes you know things happen in life or uh situations change right do you feel this affects uh the level of competition you might want to take part of for example um obviously everyone in uae knows that you have a very high level of jiu-jitsu but sometimes we see that you're competing uh, rather than in the pros and the masters, for example, do you think uh, like what ha- what will be the part which makes people decide where they're gonna compete at what level? Uh, the ma- the people think about master is easy, but it's not easy. It's not uh, too much easy. So I think it it need to focus in one division. Everybody talk about tal. So why we don't fight in adults? But that's competition. The guy I beat in the master be a champion in the end, another day. So it's not too much easy, but I think now these years I focus on fighting the master one to be a first one in the rank, end of the year. So I need, in another day, I need to focus only my students. So because I need to, to help the team improve. So this is my goal this year. 
obviously masters uh, is not easy but as you said a lot of people do ask you right maybe because of uh, your high level yeah a lot of people ask that's competition everybody say why oh, we don't fight your dudes both guys you beat in the master be a champion in the the the, the adults what well, but they need to balance what you said before I need to balance in this competed and help the students so that's why I need to balance this because it's important for my team and also I can help my team to improve to to be better definitely but to do this I have I have a teammates I have a Marcelo Vanusa I have Abdullah Saka the guys help me to be a coach and fight and uh, when it comes to competing at a high level right there are a lot of people that compete at a high level or uh, train at a high level but not everyone uh, win right some of them win some of them always win right what what is the difference why how come some people train the same live the same but not everyone wins the same uh, i think it is a mindset i think the mindset is important sometimes you you train every day you say you have good fighters in the gym in the gym the guys like a lion but when you step on the mat in the competition is be a cat so i think the mindset is important but the most important never give up never give up sometimes i before in brazil i have a bad days and start losing competition so i lose it for the guys don't have my my level to be honest but they come back to the gym my brother my my coach in brazil says, why are you lose for this guy believe me put your game in. so that's why i think the mindset is important so now i arrive in ue i lost i think two or three competition for the guys don't have my my level so i put my mind they go to brazil i talk to my brother I talk to my family so i come back strong now i start keep my i put my real game to 100 percent but I, i start improving and talking about the move to uae how hard was it leaving uh, your hometown in north northeast brazil where you were a champion you were very well known there and uh, coming to uae where you have to prove yourself again you know yeah, yeah it's, it's not not easy i come in the corona time so hard I come to work, so I start Corona, I stay in the, at the home like everybody, but I'm still trained, but it's not easy because, well, like you said, I need to build everything again. So I remember I start teaching the club, everybody, the, the new coaches come to like a challenge. Who's this guy? This guy's good. So I need to prove for the guy. So I'm here, I'm Talisson. In Brazil, I have a good job. I have a good team. I was champion there. But it's not easy. I'm still building my name here. But it's so hard. I remember the, the first day I come to, to the club, come on, one guy, I think the name is Rafael. He said, ah, everybody said you're good, but let's go play. Like play one time, two times, start submitting here and inside come another day. Then I think the, the first month, I think 20 back, back belts, like a challenge to fight with me. <laughs> so it's very good, but it's, but it's good. No? Now everybody be a friend. But before it's like a challenge. Every day is like a competition. But it's amazing. And I know you also. But it's not easy. <laughs> it's definitely not easy. Like uh, even at my level, I'm a blue belt. Let's call it advanced blue belt. I still find it hard. I still find it hard, and that's like uh, beginner level, right? Compared to champions like you. You you are so strong, man. Just yeah. change your mind. If your mindset change, you'll be a big champion. Way yeah. Sometimes in in jujitsu, when they say you are strong, it's not uh, it's not a compliment, right? Ah, you are a strong guy. <laughs> <laughs> This means your technique half half. No no no. You very strong. You have a good technique. Just need a time to train and be strong in the competition. Thank you, coach. And uh, I know you also have a, a, a well-respected record in MMA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you 11, feel? Eleven two. Eleven two, and and you 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 kind of stopped. <clears throat> Usually, people stop when they start losing. You stopped when you were also winning. Yeah. So I, I before I have a dream to fight in MMA, just 
you want only one fight. I remember when I say for my mother, I want to fight the MMA. She, no, not fight. It's not good. My friends, everybody. But I, I like, I, one time I watched Pride, I, I saw Minotaur fighting. So mm. I, I like to do this, but I want just one fight. But after I did the, the first fight, I, ah, now I need to fight. So I love this feeling. But in Brazil, MMA is so hard. So, so hard to fight MMA. But yeah, MMA, I think I, before I always I sign in UFC. I remember UFC with Fortaleza before because I, my record is so good. I think I four or five wins in a row. Then the guys start talking about oh, Tals UFC, Tals UFC. I think like, I think one magazine in Brazil talk about this, but I don't sign this time. So I sign. I, I now I time to change my life. I now to now time to come to work in Jiu Jitsu like a, because the MMA is not easy. Even training so hard. But now, I say for you now, this year, focus only in Jiu Jitsu. But next year, I, I want to come back to fight the MMA. At least two or three fights more. I don't know, maybe. That's an exclusive news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I think I I'm, I have power and still strong in Jiu Jitsu. I need to put in MMA. I need to put my game, I need to... The people know Talson Soares MMA because many people ask, why hey, well, don't you come, don't, why you give up, you retire to MMA, so don't retire, just now I need just to... Just taking a break. Team, then it comes back strong. Huh? Just taking a break. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just break. And but inshallah next year will be bad. When it comes to MMA and Jiu Jitsu, uh, which do you think in your particular case, complemented the other. So do you feel being an MMA fighter uh, made you stronger in jiu-jitsu mentally or being strong in jiu-jitsu made you a better MMA fighter? I think it's both. I think it, the, the mindset and the, my mind is when I fight jiu-jitsu, for me it's easy because if you go to the cage, the guy wants to kill you inside the, the, the Cage. So in Jiu Jitsu is easy, just fight and halas, finish. But in MMA also, I believe my Jiu Jitsu. I feel if I put the guy down, I can submit easy. I think it's both like help each other. And you told me about your plans for next year, MMA and jumping back. What about this year? I see you competed a lot on the AJP tour circuit. What else? is planned for Teles and Suarez on the AJP circuit. Grand Slam is coming up to uh, is coming up soon in Abu Dhabi. Is that something you're eyeing? Yeah. Uh, I want in Australia, Grand Slam. I want I one in London, now Abu Dhabi, the last one in this season. So I'm so confident for this competition, to be honest, because I'm training so hard. I know my, my opponents, I come some guys to Brazil, I beat before. There are some guys who beat me before in Brazil. I think it's be good, be good competition. So I, I want to be number one. End of the, the, the year, I, I want to be there in the red carpet, number one. This is my goal, this is my focus. And uh, when it comes to the preparation, are you training uh, also with uh, Coach Vanusa, or are you guys only uh, coaching together? No, I give the class there, uh, the, the technique part in the, the, the class, and Vanusa keep the, the, the train, like a head coach. He make a plan. So we help it, we help each, each other there. So, but we have a lot of coaches to help, uh, different style, like guys come to Nova Union, guys come to Grace Barra, and many teams to, to help. So today I talk to the guy about this, because for example, their guys play half guard. So in my, my team, like Shaq Matt, I think only one guy play like that. So the guys play Lapro guard, new styles. So you have a lot of guys to play different games. It helped me a lot. It's not like one team. There is a, a lot of styles to, to, to learn. These are Jiu Jitsu, these are lifestyle. So talking about coaching, I always wondered, um, now the level in UAE of competitors, it's high, right? 
we have Zaid Likteri, yeah, yeah. we have Khalid Shahi, we have a few people that are actually making noise uh, all over the world. What would it take to have Emirati coaches, in your opinion? Now you've seen, you've been here, you've coached, you know all the coaches. What would it take? Uh, I think it's not easy to be a coach. I need to born to be a coach. I think you feel like a, I'm coach. I don't know. I need time. Need time. Need time to 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 be a coach. Because now they the all the talents here only fighting, fighting, fighting. So I think after five, ten years we we have a good coach here in UAE. But now because we have a lot of Brazilian to to give the class, all the clubs have a Brazilian. But I think five, ten years we have a good coach here. And I think these students, given the fact that they are being coached by Brazilians, this is going to help them. Yes, this is going to help them have a system. Yes. It's going to help them uh, live the lifestyle more, uh, be more uh, programmatic when they are training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? I think it's, what I said before, help each other. I think it's, uh, it's important. Talison, I don't want to uh, keep you uh, waiting a lot. I know you're going to training, as you mentioned earlier. Thank you a lot for your time. Always a pleasure online, offline. I really appreciate your help also in uh, Open Mat. I'll be seeing you around. Yeah, thank you a lot. Her teammates call her the big sister, a strong and independent athlete straight out of the UAE. Meet Hessel Shamsi. Hassa Shamsi, uh, first of all, Ramadan Kareem, and uh, thank you for joining us on this episode of Zoom In. Ramadan Kareem, what kind of problem? Um, I've personally seen you on the local uh, UAE Jiu Jitsu scene compete, but uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Slam London performance, that was something else. Yes, actually, I was preparing for it for a while. <laughs> preparing differently? Tell me, tell me more about that. It's not just preparing differently. I mean, all of the competitors, they all know Jiu-Jitsu from a long time. It's the, the only difference uh, between each player is how they prepare themselves mentally. So in London, that was, was different. Me preparing myself mentally. And mentally, in what sense? I know you finished all your, uh, all your matches uh, by submission. Was that the mentality? Go and finish everyone? Yes, yes. Actually, the thought of... Uh, my goal to myself was going in and uh, do the submission, doesn't matter how, and uh, how long does it take. And uh, apparently I did my favorite uh, technique and I submitted all of them with the same technique. So that's a, I'm so proud of myself for doing that. You should be, you should be. Yes. <laughs> and uh, coming up next, Abu Dhabi Grand Slam in your hometown. Yes. And how's the preparation for that? I know it's Ramadan now and training in Ramadan, you know, it has its own uh, challenges, but I'm interested to know more how, how you do that. It is pretty challenging since we're fasting and during the day we get a lot of cravings, but we still have to keep training and try to control all of that. It all falls in the mental uh, space at the same time. Because so when you're fasting, okay, we're all Muslims, we know that we're supposed to fast. But during the day, um, how we control our minds is what, is what matters. When we're in the training, we have to focus on that we have uh, tournaments coming up and we have to uh, fix our mistakes. And, you know, we have to think about all of those instead of thinking, oh, no, I'm thirsty or I'm hungry or I'm... Uh, except for the craving, cravings, we crave so much in Ramadan, especially during trainings. And yeah, we have to think, focus on um, how good it feels when we get the medal later on. So that's, that's what we need to focus on. And that's what I personally do, at least. I have to focus on that I want to get the medal so I get through the trainings during Ramadan. But after the fall, the, the training is a lot better than when we're fasting. I know your uh, training after this interview. What, what type of training do you have today? Uh, Jiu-Jitsu. At the Mubadala Arena or at your club? No, 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 at my club. <laughs> and uh, with that being said, what are your plans 
as a purple belt, if we're talking about the long-term plans as a purple belt? Honestly, um, I had the, I got this opportunity that I'm hopefully uh, going to excel in this year. I can't talk about it yet, but the achievements is going to speak for itself, inshallah, soon. So I am preparing for it from now. Um, I have to gain a lot of weight. Uh, right now, my current weight is like 50, 55. I have to gain up to, no, no, sorry. My weight right now is 51, 52. I have to gain up to 55. So that's the thing. That's one thing. And a second thing, uh, the tournament that I'm going to play in, uh, I'll be playing against black belts, purple belts. So like I'm the lowest, uh, I'm the lowest belt that I'm going to compete in front of. So I have to really fix my game, understand the rules more about the black belts and the submissions that I can work with and everything. Also try to uh, fit the black belt game into my purple belt game. So I have like an, in a span of four months to work on that. And I'm, I already started working on it. And hopefully the achievements will show you guys. And who's helping you with that plan? Everyone actually, uh, from my club, my coaches, my colleagues, and uh, the national team themselves. And uh, I heard that you have uh, the nickname Big Sister. Is that like a national team thing or a team thing? It's a team thing, also a national team thing. You can say that. I love to encourage my 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 teammates to do better, uh, especially that um, when I were when I were in, in their place, I wanted someone to speak to me in that sense to uh, enlighten me of the ways that I should be doing jujitsu. Like, for example, I should uh, focus on my passion. Uh, ask ask myself if I really want to be here. If I really want to go to the competition or I'm just being there by force. And um, I was explaining that to them the other day, actually. We were, we had the competition uh, yesterday, the President Cup. And um, I was telling them to focus on their mentality. For example, uh, I keep telling them that when you go to the training, like normal training, you have to think of yourself as if you're going to a tournament. So your body becomes nervous. And you feel anxious and everything. So you have to know how to control that during the training. So when you go to the tournament, it becomes a lot easier for you. And you're going to feel like more flexible to uh, focus on your game and believe in yourself. And just like not really as stressed as if you're not prepared mentally. So I was explaining that to them and they were so happy about it. Because really, someone needs to explain that to them as a... As like I, as me, a player, I've been playing for more than ten years in jiu-jitsu. So, so I really, I was, that was the only thing that I was thinking. The mental game, the physical is there, is already there, but the mental part, you have to fix it from yourself. Even if there's a lot of people around you that are going to help you with the techniques and everything, but if you don't help yourself first, it doesn't work. So it's like uh, be the person uh, you needed when you were younger, right? Yes, I'm exactly. trying to do that. Good, good. Because at first, when you when they said uh, big sister, I thought it's like uh, from the protective nature, or is it like that also? Yeah, you could say that. Like in the training, sometimes I would be like, for example, uh, in the sparring time. Uh, the coach would put me with uh, with one of my colleagues. If she did some something wrong, I would show her. No, you have to do this, this, that, and try to control the speed. You have to uh, hold here and there. And then uh, I, I tell her, let's go again. Not from the very beginning, from the position that we were. So I try to do that. Also, trying to protect each other. I keep telling them, don't hurt each other. We have a tournament this weekend. We have to push each other. You know, all that, all that kind of stuff. Mentorship style. I like I like this style. Uh, Hessa, yes. I'm not gonna <laughs> hold you back. I know you guys are uh, strict when it comes to training. Thank you a lot for your time. And we'll be having uh, no longer chats soon. Thank you so much, Zahi. Bye bye. Yes, another episode of zoom in is recorded done. What are we going to talk about next month? And who are we going to feature on our show? Well, that's up to you guys. Drop us a comment and let us know. We will see you next month. Shane, hit that outro.